Hi, I'm Lana Kelly, and this is Hudson Valley Art Speak. Thank you for tuning in to, to spend some time with us. Um, today, I'm going to be talking to William B. Owens, also known as Bill. Yeah. Um, Bill's a weaver, and he um, took up the craft a couple of years ago, and he makes these um, really, really beautiful scarves. And, and uh, So, hi, Bill. Hi. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. So, how did you get started weaving? Well, uh, I had a good friend who wanted to do something nice for me, and she treated me to a weaving class in Manhattan, and on the spot, I loved it, because it was working with color and fiber and all these different things that interested me, and I bought this loom right here on the spot, and been doing it ever since after that one class. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And, and um, was it this particular type of of yarns that, that they were using in the class, or what kind of a class was um, it? It was um, beginner's class, and uh -huh. you got to pick your own yarn. So I picked, I happened to pick two Noro yarns, which are, is a really interesting, kind of gnarly, bright colored, in many different combinations. And I used it both in the warp and the weft, and the people that were teaching the class said, oh, I never thought of that. So I said, oh, maybe I'm onto something here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You seem to have a very uh, brilliant and bright color palette. <laughs> I like color. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Would you, were you ever into painting? Or? Yeah, I, when I was, I did a lot of art classes in high school, and um, I did silk screening, watercolor, pen and ink, um, just about everything. I had great art teachers mm -hmm. when I was in, in high school. And then uh, after I got out of the service, I went to purchase, and I didn't do visual arts, but most of my friends were visual artists. Yeah. So. Yeah. One of my sons went to purchase, and, and he didn't do the arts curriculum either, but he's got artist friends and dancers yeah. and people from all over the world yeah. that he knows. Yeah, it's so. a great place. It really was. Yeah. So um, what inspires you when you're making scarves? What, what uh, for instance, this, this green scarf that you're working on? Well, e each scarf I do, I want to do like a different theme. Like I, I, I get, I say, okay, I want to do greens. So I, I have a lot of yarn, a lot of yarn. <laughs> and so I, I'll pick a whole bunch and I'll pile it on my table. And I'll go, okay, this works with that, this works with that. And then sometimes I'll take like a multicolored one and go, and then I'll, if I like all the colors in it, I'll kind of riff off of that and pick other yarns that go with it. Um, and then... I have a sheet and I, I write all the yarns down, I give them each a number. Then I set up my warp and as I set up that, I pick which ones I'm going to use. And then, so usually if I, I'll pick like maybe 14 different yarns. And most of the time I only end up using maybe six or eight. Sometimes I use all 14. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I kind of see it as I go. I just love the color. Yeah, so. yeah. But you'll, do you start kind of with a base color and then? Yeah, I get an I get a yeah. th kind of a theme color in mind. Like I say, this was greens. Or sometimes I'll do, or I want to do like um, like this one was blues, and you know, and yeah. uh, or I want to do contrasting colors. Like I'll start with one color on the outside, then I'll go to black, and then completely shift the color spectrum in the middle. It it, it just depends. I, and I want to make every each time it's a different thing. I don't, I don't do green, 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 or I don't do blue, blue. I always like to change it up. Oh, but, really? Yeah, from go scarf from, to scarf. Yeah, I like to yeah. go to like earth tones to blues, mm -hmm. or earth tones to, or purples to yellows, or then yellows and orange, or, and then I like to mix up colors. People tell me that I tend to put colors together that they wouldn't have thought of. I'll do. I've done some yellow, orange, and pink scarves that came out really nice. Yeah, yeah. How about th these? These are fairly thin yarns. So, so about how long does it take to make a scarf? Because I have to earn a living other ways, yeah. um, it can take it can take um, a week. Probably is the average. Yeah. I've done a scarf on a rainy weekend. I started it on Saturday, and finished it on Sunday. Yeah, just intently working. Just that. intently working yeah, on it, you yeah. know. So, yeah. um, and the the thickness of the yarn has, does have some effect, but I'm not constantly working with very thin. So. Yeah. Any technology involved in this in terms of automation or anything? Not really. Um, it's all, that's what I like about it because, I, you know, I, I do graphic design. I use computers all day long and I don't need anything except my hands, some light, the yarn, and the, and the loom. Yeah. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's great. 
Yeah, so where do you get yarn? Is it is it easily available? Yeah, it's too easily available. <laughs> I mean, I used to go to the Sheep and Wool Fair, which happens every October in Rhinebeck, and, which is fabulous. It's the best in the country. But I wasn't weaving at the time, so it didn't cost me anything. So you, knew, you were kind of in training <laughs> I was, then. Yeah, you I didn't was, know it. <laughs> I knew what was out there, but I didn't know what yeah. to do with it. But after, ever since I've taken the class, you know, I go there and, I mean, I can drop $600 on yarn in really? one day. But we're, there's a lot of places, you know, right in Pauling, we have a great yarn shop, mm -hmm. you know, um, Yarn and Craft, Marie Stewart. She does a great job. Um, and she's one of the ones that's really encouraged me in all of this. And my friend Marlia, who treated me to the class, and they know, and they know all the places. And like right now, I'm doing what's called a yarn cruise, and there's 16 different places that have signed up and you go there and they stamp your passport and I tend to buy we're at each of those and they're all different they're great really? yeah I mean there's a there's a yarn shop in Middletown American Needle which was formerly an upholstery shop and Jim the owner is just a really neat guy and he still has some of the old furniture there so he uses it to stage the yarn like he has an old um, box spring uh -huh. And he turns it on end, and he uses the, the springs for places oh, to put the yarn. Oh, that's and, great. And he's got these old ornate furniture, and it's just fabulous. Yeah. You know, and, and then you go to a place like in Cornwall. There's a there's a great place that it's a, just a a house, and every room is just stuffed with yarn everywhere. Uh -huh. It's like amazing. Really. Yeah. Really. And and what happens? Do you try to get? You said you're on a yarn cruise, so so do you have to do it all in two days, or is it? No, it starts get... now and it ends in September, uh -huh. and it's kind of like a challenge. If you go to all the places, then you get a chance to win a prize at the end, and there's okay. an actual cruise at the end on on the Hudson, which is oh, nice. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So that's fun. Yeah. And you meet the other thing is I just like the people in the fiber world. Everyone's just really nice. I mean, mm -hmm. it's part of why I started going to the Sheep and Wool Fair. It's just all the people that disappeared from the 60s, that's where they are. <laughs> <laughs> They're all raising sheep, huh? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is not a large loom, is it? Um, and I'm just wondering, it, do you find that that limits you or that it, it, it I challenges find it, I you? like to, it's a, it's a single heddle, uh, rigid heddle loom. It's 10 inches wide, which means I'm limited by those dimensions. This is a, ver a variable heddle on here, so I can change the the reads to different counts. Uh -huh. But that's the extent of what I can do with that. But I like the challenge of having to work in a tight framework and then make it work creatively, which is why I use so many different yarns of different types of fiber, different colors, different textures. I even use ribbons. Some of these back here have ribbons in them. Um, you know, I mix it all up. That was the... When I first started, that's what I had to learn. I was doing crazy stuff when I first started. People were going, that's nice, but, you know, and then yeah. I kind of figured it out. I have to get, you know, to get the drape and to get the everything together. Oh, and that's, yeah, yeah I mean, so um, it was fun working with really fat stuff, but it wasn't always as effective as it could have been. Right. And, and that's one of the tricks to this, too. The hard part is you want to set the tension up on what's called the warp, uh, which is the long part that runs up and down the scarves. Yeah. Um, this is here and then but when you use different materials and different fibers there's different as you're tensioning it on the spindle you're you have to make sure you keep the as much of an even tension as you can yeah. so I've learned kind of do that you know, I mean like like I said I made mistakes when I first started I put mohair I didn't know a lot about this stuff so I right, was doing it yeah. on my own and after about going 12 inches I couldn't turn the ratchet anymore and I looked around and there was a tribble living behind the heddle yeah. because the mohair had just which is why yarn works the way it does it has a natural tooth to it it had collected itself as it was going through the reeds yeah and I had to cut it off the loom yeah. but a lesson learned yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it, it, those those little fibers on mohair kind of not up yes even if you're knitting with it or yeah you know? Um, so is there, you, you mentioned you really like the people, is there a community of weavers that? There are different groups, like there's a weavers group in Red Hook. They do some interesting things. I've only seen them at events. I haven't had time to go because they may be kind of late for me to get up there and get back. But that's yeah. something, I'm a goal of mine is to get there and, and kind of get together with them. Um, they do fun stuff at the different events. Um, they have a, a, a weave off where they bring a, a spinner comes in, spins the yarn from the roving. Then he has to put 
set up the set up the loom and weave a scarf in a s certain period of time, which is just nuts. I yeah, mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it takes me a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, is it doable though? Yeah, they do it. They get yeah. it done. I mean, it's not nothing fancy. It's yeah. pretty much yeah down and dirty. Get mm -hmm. it done. But yeah, it's yeah. pretty neat. Yeah. One thing I found that was interesting when we were looking at the scarves behind us, and I, I had asked you, you know, where you get in your inspiration, and you said it could come from anywhere. And I just was looking at that, that black and gold scarf, and, and where did you say that you got that inspiration Oh, I was from? watching um, a TV show. Um, um, Bloodlines, you said. No, yeah, Blue Bloods. Blue Bloods. And they do these great night city shots and the sparkling lights against the black stark background and stuff. So I look at that and I see patterns in that and colors where like a, my, I call myself caterpillar scarves. So I look at caterpillars uh -huh. and I get, you know, because they have, they can have like striking, yeah. you know, color combinations. Yeah. So yeah. I, you know, I look anywhere for inspiration uh -huh. like that. Uh -huh. And I did, I did a couple of Van Gogh scarves that I've done. Um, what are they? Well, there's one called the Red Vineyard, which is really rich. It's, it's, it's a vineyard scene with people working in the vineyards against the shoreline. And it's got blues and rich, you know, reds and oranges and okras. And so I, I, I used all those colors and two different scarves and different combinations. And then there's, there's a, a Van Gogh painting called The Bedroom, which has this great window, which is yellows and greens. And I picked all, I, which is why I say I have a lot of yarn, because I wanted to get the colors exactly right. Yeah to match the colors in the painting. So I, that was kind of fun. Did you go to the museum to see the painting? No, I actually, I have the Van Gogh book. Yeah, I was working yeah, out of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bill, where can people see your work? Um, right now, I'm in the Riverwinds Gallery, which is on Main Street in, uh, in Beacon, uh -huh. which is a great place to go. Yeah. And it's a great gallery. Um, they are uh, very eclectic, really great works, you know, from painting to watercolor to sculpture to photography. Right. They do a great job. Yeah, they do. It's a beautiful yeah, it's shop. It's really, really yeah. nice people. And that they found me on the Art East tour. Uh huh. Uh, so, and they wanted a fi fiber artist, and that's yeah. how I got in there. Yeah, that's interesting because they, they have come around to different people on the Art East Open Studio tour and invited them to, you know, to show at the gallery. Yeah. Yeah, and you're going to be uh, open for artists this year? Yes, I am. Uh-huh, and yep. that, that will be in October, and um, people can look forward to visiting yeah. you then. And all the other artists. And all the other artists, yeah, there'll be uh, about 40 other artists this year. Wow. Which is, it'll be a nice, uh, a robust tour. Yes. Yeah. So is there anything that we didn't cover that you just wanted to say quickly of, or... Um, um, you mentioned that you do websites, so people can... Um, yeah, my, my, my website, caterpillarscars.com, yeah. caterpillar with a K, scars with a K. Um, and, you know, and just, I'm really grateful to, the, to my friends in this, the Marlia that got me into this, um, Marie who supported me, you know, Artie yeah, has been great. Yeah. You know, um, I just, um, it's, that's part of what I like about it is the community. I mean, mm -hmm. I love doing it you know but it's yeah it's but it's one of those it's a kind of art form that involves people you have to wear it so it's right <laughs> it's, right it's uh <laughs> and that's that's what's exciting to me i mean i really came to me when i saw when i'd done about half a dozen or more than i said and i saw them all in one place i was like wow you know this is a real thing it's yeah. like it still amazes me that i start with this pile of stuff and then a scarf comes out and then the it end. becomes a scarf yeah. Yeah, yeah well they're beautiful thanks for bringing them Thank tonight you. So thanks for coming. Thank you. It was good to talk to you.